Hey, this is Angelo John Lewis for the Sacred Inclusion Network podcast. In case you're not familiar with us, we're a group of people that are exploring the, the intersection between diversity and spirituality. If you'd like to know more about us, please visit our website, sacredinclusion.com. Today, I am um, pleased and privileged to interview my um, collaborator, the newest associate director of the Sacred Inclusion Network, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is a spiritual life coach and energy healer. She has taught spiritual growth, personal growth in many different contexts for over eight years. And she also has a degree in counseling psychology from a positive psychology school, which um, at least in theory means that she understands a little bit about the psychological dimensions of the human experience in addition to the, the spiritual aspects of it, let's say. And today we're going to talk about toxic masculinity. Uh, but first of all, Wendy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Well, I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> so I have to say that, um, you know, um, when I hear the word toxic masculinity, I usually hear those kind of words from males. You know, people in the men's movement, um, you're obviously a woman. So um, what, what calls you to talk about this subject? What interests you in this subject? Why? Yeah, that's a very good question. So as I decided to restart my business and I've um, reshaped myself into a women's leadership coach and spiritual teacher, I've always been a spiritual teacher, but the um, leadership coaching was new to me. And uh, I chose leadership coaching because I'm so passionate about wanting to make the world a safer and happier place. And I truly believe that more women in positions of power and leadership will transform uh, everyone's experience on the planet at all levels of society. I really believe that. And the big elephant in the room around that is why is planet Earth such a dangerous place for humans among their fellow humans? And when you examine the causes <laughs> of danger, and uh, despair and uh, lack of resources and um, starvation and wars and all those kinds of things. I really sum them up, um, the source of them to one thing. And that is humanity has not evolved as a whole to give the importance of managing and understanding our emotions the attention it deserves. I truly believe that every, and, and this is, of course is coming from a perspective of a psychologist, a person that studied psychology, you know, extensively, and spirituality. Really, both are just uh, different points of view of understanding the human, human animal. And I am actually quite dumbfounded as to why we have not evolved past the height of human intellect um, in ancient Greece. In fact, I think we've regressed from them, from there, you know. We've regressed from the peak of intellectual um, and philosophical achievement uh, from thousands of years ago. And I'm dumbfounded that we haven't, as a species, um, evolved enough to know what is very plain to see, that people start wars when they are feeling a certain way, feeling slighted, or feeling like they do not know how to get what they need. And then the answer is to take an aggression. And that would fall into the category of what most people are referring to as toxic masculinity. <clears throat> I personally dislike that term. 
because uh, I don't believe it has enough compassion in it. And I don't think it addresses the reality of what we've created as a species, both men and women, when it comes to the socially acceptable behavior and emotional range that is acceptable in society for men. So, I mean, I guess an obvious question, Wendy, is when I hear the term toxic masculinity, as I have not heard that phrase in that way, way before. Uh, it, it really, it gives me the sense that it's men that are the problem as opposed to it's humanity's problem. So um, tell me what I'm not seeing. Well, I definitely believe it's humanity's problem for sure. It's not, this is not uh, men are, are messed up and they need to straighten up. This is humanity needs to wake up to what we are doing to our men. Um, I honestly believe that um, men are being um, uh, violated, actually, to be frank, and that the behaviors that are toxic, so masculinity is not toxic. Masculinity is divine. Masculinity is wonderful. Behaviors have become toxic. And they've become toxic because as a species, um, as a society, we've put men in a box that says, in order to be masculine, you have about four acceptable emotional states. It is highly acceptable for you to be angry. It is acceptable for you to be neutral and not talkative. It is acceptable for you to be happy for short periods of time for really good reasons. And it's acceptable for you to be sad for very short periods of time and only for very good reasons. Other than that, you're not allowed to express yourself. And if you do, you are then called derogatory terms related to the feminine by both men and women. Mm. So I know having talked to you about this a little bit um, before, uh, I know that, um, you know, you've had some experience of toxic masculinity in your life. And uh, maybe you could speak to that. Yeah. So I, I, as a person who's dedicated myself to um, really, I'm going to say radical um, personal growth, <laughs> I confront truth. Um, even when it's most difficult. So in my family history, I come from a long line of women that have experienced sexual abuse at multiple levels. It is truly generational in my family. And I, too, experienced it uh, in my uh, early teens. Um, and I will just say right now, I'm currently listening to Michelle Obama's Becoming. You know, I didn't read it when everybody else did. I'm just now listening to it. And I heard her talk about be, being 14 and 15 years old and starting to become a woman. And she had freedom from her, her neighborhood and was going uh, to other places in Chicago, going to a special school. And she talked about having to not walk in certain areas of the neighborhood and how to not engage, even with her eyes, men clustered to keep herself safe at 14. Um, and we think this is normal. <laughs> there is nothing normal about a woman or a young woman or a teenager or a child that is female having n no freedom to walk and look without having to protect herself. That is ridiculous. And humanity has um, come to accept it. There's a complacency around that state as if it is the way it should be. It is not. 
Um, and I believe humanity is capable of much, much better behavior. Um, and I will say when I was listening to Michelle Obama's account, it reminded me of hearing uh, Jane Fonda talk about her adopted black daughter. She grew up with Jane Fonda and then she went to live with her father in a, in a predominantly black neighborhood. I think it was in Oakland, California for a while. And she had the same experience that I had. And she used this phrase that so resonated with me. She said when she left, you know, her mother, Jane Fonda's home and environment and went to live with her father, she became prey. And I felt that way when I became a woman as well as a young teenager. All of a sudden I became prey and I was being preyed upon. <clears throat> um, and there was one more instance I was going to bring up, but I'll leave it at that with um, those words. That the fact that women are not safe in society is related to this topic. It's one of those things I would like to change. And, and what I see happening in society is, and we see this being played out in the political um, arena with our current president and his associates, there is an unspoken societal norm that says uh, certain men and beha bad behavior by men should not be talked about, acknowledged, or punished. There is um, a, a, um, an air of silence and keeping quiet, which is why the Me Too movement was so radical and so polarizing because prior to the Me Too movement, and, and it still goes on now because it's a cultural norm, when uh, there is violence done, there's a lot of secrecy. There's a lot of keeping quiet. There's a lot of risk in speaking up and there's a lot of support or downplaying or uh, really what it is, is um, a great deal of denial of the reality of the violent actions by men. Well, you know, actually, as you pointed out, um, this has almost become a norm and, uh, or it is, it is a norm. And I guess the question I have is, um, you know, I mean, what's your sense as to the origin of this? I mean, this has been going on for forever, for certainly as long as I've been alive and probably longer than that. Yeah, it's been going on for millennia, yeah. <laughs> pretty much for all of human history. So, so this is the the thing. I and this is my theory. Okay, what I'm about to say is my theory. It doesn't mean it's the truth with a capital T, but it is what I believe. It makes perfect sense that the the uh, male side of the species that was physically stronger has historically uh, taken the lead. That actually makes a lot of sense. However, as we evolved as a species with our new fantastic neocortex <laughs> that allows us to have metacognition, we can observe our own thoughts, we develop the language, we started developing tools, and lo and behold, we wind up in the 21st century and our technology is out of this world. The technology is so advanced that we, don't, we no longer have to rely on the strength of men to accomplish a lot of the work. We have machines that do that now, which means the primary reason for men having um, I'm going to say supremacy over the female side of the species is no longer needed or as relevant. So there's been a lot of discussion about women's empowerment and men needing to find a new place, a new way to relate 
to women. And it's because the primary basis for their supremacy um, or a higher step in the high social hierarchy has been made obsolete. So this is like a, um, I don't want to say it's off topic. It, it's certainly related to the topic, but it's not the same. Not on, I'm going on a, a little bit different strand. As you know, we all have the male and we have the female inside of ourselves, you know? So, um, you know, how, how to, you know, to some extent, you've, you've come into this topic as a topic that you want to address and to deal with. Uh -huh. And I know, um, you know, in previous conversations, you talked about getting in touch with the male, the male energy inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. attempting to bring that into balance, um, hopefully in a productive way, <laughs> in, in a Neanderthal way. Um, what's that about? Speak to that a little bit. Sure. So in my own healing process from sex abuse, my first profound experience with getting in touch with the um, divine masculine inside of me, because as you just said, every human has masculine and feminine qualities and virtues. And uh, my first attempt was when I went to counseling to address the sex abuse in my family and my own personal experience with it. I ended up doing um, uh, what could be termed as soul retrieval. Uh, you, you should define that for people that are not familiar with that. Sure. Soul retrieval is a shamanic um, activity, healing activity, where a traditionally a shaman in native cultures would um, put uh, the patient <laughs> in a trance state and travel to unseen realms in order to retrieve aspects of an individual's psyche that have been damaged in the process of trauma okay. and return that part of themselves um, to their waking consciousness to integrate and make themselves more whole. So you had this experience and this relates to um, the topic that we're talking about. Yes, I did the, the soul retrieval and past life exploration both specifically in my attempt to understand men. I wanted to know why do men abuse sexually and what is happening in their psyche that allows them to behave that way, to treat another human being as prey. And so I did exploration in the form of the soul retrieval. And what I saw and discovered was a past life where I was a sexual predator as a man, which was shocking to me. And I felt that um, person's emotional state as a perpetrator. And what I realized is that humans, and I mean humans, men and women, can only behave in horrific ways if they are holding horrific emotional states inside of themselves. So every perpetrator is a victim. There is something poisonous inside of them. Not because they're inherently evil, but because they are holding on to and haven't processed and haven't healed some tremendous trauma um, of their own. And literally their bad behavior is an overflow of the toxicity, the emotional toxicity that they have inside of them. So, when you use the phrase divine masculine, what do you mean? So, because I'm, obviously, that sounds a lot different than this perpetrator we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, that goes into my entire theory. I'm going to try to be very succinct about my entire theory of the purpose of life and why we exist. 
<laughs> Let me really succeed. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I believe humans are hybrid beings. I believe we have a soul, and the soul is who we really are. The soul is pure spirit, pure energy, purely divine. The soul is what animates the animal body. When the soul is not in the body, that's when you see the dead body in the casket and you feel no energy. The energy that is gone is the soul. I believe that when the soul comes into the animal human body, it gives the animal body its own consciousness. That consciousness from the human animal is the part of us that holds fear, that hangs on to trauma, that is constantly trying to protect, that has self-doubt. The part of us, we also have an inner guru an inner source of wisdom and strength and joy and divine virtue. And that comes from our soul. So we are these crazy hybrid creatures on a planet set up, I believe, on a divine level to give us experiences through relativity, meaning we understand light by living in its opposite, dark. We understand love through experiencing its opposite, apathy, hatred, harm, all of those things. This is a hardcore place for the soul to learn. It is not for the weak. And any soul that chooses the earth adventure is what I would call um, a green beret on a black ops mission <laughs> on the soul level. <laughs> Because the experience here is not easy. It's hard because we learn and we embody and we truly understand divine virtue through experiencing the opposite. So um, when we do um, our little exploration on this toxic masculinity, it'd be good to get a little taste for that. Because I think the ultimate thing, um, I mean, as a man and as a human being that... um, you know, I mean, I'm not perfect, but let's let, let's just say that I have this this um, toxic masculine um, elements of that in my personality. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some ways that I can go about healing myself? That's number one, and mm-hmm. then, then we have to start talking about women's equation in this whole thing. But let's let's just address um, um, what the male can do to be, to become um, more realized and and more um, uh, this divine masculine. Um, more expressed from that point of view as opposed to a point of view of domination and control. Sure. So we'll get back to the my original um, thread of discussion at the very top of our conversation here. Um, humanity must evolve to the place where we elevate the importance of understanding and training how to manage our emotions. Mm-hmm. I believe the source of all of the toxic masculine behavior is lack of coping appropriately with emotions. So um, I, if you talk to any psychologist, they will tell you that rape is about power and control. Mm -hmm. Um, The feeling of not having power or not having control is not male, it's human. That, and the techniques for feeling those behaviors are also not male exclusive. They're good for all humans because the opposites play together. And the role of women as victims is also something to heal at the same time. And so the technique is the same for whether you are um, in a position of being a victim, which gives you justification to be violent, which most people don't acknowledge. When you're a victim, you have an absolute, in, in our current human mentality, you have an absolute right to lash out, to be verbally violent, to be emotionally violent, And to be violent to yourself in keeping yourself in an emotional state that is harmful. 
instead of choosing to step into divine power. And divine power is rooted in love. Love is not weak, and I'm not talking about the hippie be on a commune and put a flower in your hair kind of love. I'm talking about holding each other able to embody divine virtue and ideals and not settling for less. It is not loving for women to enforce this minimal range of acceptable emotional states for men. It is making our men crazy. Mm -hmm. They have no outlet for everything that they feel, and men feel just as deeply and just as much as women. Any conversation to the contrary is simply social conditioning, programming, and it is not true. I honestly believe it is just not true. When I observe human behavior from men and women, we are driven and motivated by our emotions and men act out because of lack of emotional regulation and lack of understanding what's actually happening with them. And then not having a socially acceptable outlet to actually express their divine feminine side of their psyche. So let's back up a little bit. Uh, and you didn't say this, but you, you seem to imply it. Um, so in the, in the, I'll call it lower self male psyche, um, mm-hmm. there may be um, this tendency towards um, negative emotions, expressing negative emotions through um, variants of dominance and control, let's say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that implies that on the female side, they're, 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 they're speak a little bit to, to the yin and the yang. We all have, as humans have to purify ourselves to get to a, a more, um, I'll, I'll call it divine place for, la- for lack of a better, uh, ba- better way of expressing it. Um, mm-hmm. but would you agree that it, it's, it's, a, it's a different dynamic for men versus women? I mean, obviously in the ultimate, it's the same thing, but there must, must be some, some sort of um, polarity. You know, I actually don't think there is. It's all the same. Women have control issues as well. Control issues are rooted in fear. Well, how do they differ from male, male issues? Let's put it they, that way. Yeah, they, they express differently, but it's rooted in the exact same emotion. So um, the commonality, the human, common humanity level is fear. The second level on top of that fear as a common human response is control. When you get on top of that control is where you start to express being controlling differently as a man than you do as a woman. So a woman who's constantly nagging and berating and criticizing constantly and wanting everything to be perfect and being and nagging and annoying, that's an expression of being controlling. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a, the shadow side of that entire uh, fear, control, behavior, you know, how I express my being controlling. For men, because they have a lot of testosterone, right. it's more aggressive. Mm-hmm. It's more in your face. It's not um, passive. It's direct, their controlling behavior. Everything from um, something as painful and passive as stonewalling, not talking, not discussing emotions, shutting down, all the way up the scale to starting war, Mm. right? And that entire range. All of that is fear, and because I'm afraid, I need to control, Mm -hmm. and then this entire range of behaviors out of that. So, as you know, appropriate to use the term toxic masculinity to a certain extent, because that, in a sense, that's a power dynamic, which which is dominating the planet right now. So, um, I guess the question I would ask you is... um, um, women have some ability to 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 influence this <laughs> yes. for the better. Hopefully, um, what is your sense as to some some keys? So my personal approach 
is as an aquarium is the grassroots community spread it through grassroots um, approach. And I believe it has to be two pronged. I believe women have to become empowered and stronger and step out of the victim role while men need to be supported in being healed because they're actually traumatized by not being able to express themselves. And then I think good men are traumatized by being seen as a dangerous people. Mm. Black people notice have that experience as a common experience. If we're in a, a, an area where it's predominantly white or we're in a shopping situation in a, in a store that, where the pe- people are predominantly white, there will be a high percentage of white people that will automatically assume that the black person is dangerous in some way. Especially if it's a male. Especially if it's a male. And for men universally, they have, this is for good men, and this is a trauma. They are seen as dangerous. They can't look at women very long unless they're going to be perceived as threatening. They can't interact with children these days very much, or they'll be perceived as weird, possibly a pedophile. There is this built-in um, unspoken assumption that men are going to do wrong, be wrong, and are unsafe. Mm-hmm. Now, there's good reason for that, but it's not true for every individual male. And so there's a lot of trauma and the healing that needs to be done. So the work has to be done by both men and women. It's not just a problem for men, good grief. And women support this ridiculous, these ridiculous social norms for men that are inappropriate and harmful. There's no other way to say it. it the, the norms that we have for men have created this human environment where we're afraid of men. Mm. And they are allowed to behave badly with very little consequence. Even when they're caught, it's very, very difficult for them to be held accountable. Very difficult. And that's a human problem, not just a man problem on both sides for all of humanity we have to start normalizing emotional training and emotional regulation and be taught new behaviors and responses to the feelings and beliefs that we have that's a whole other topic that could be several volumes of books there. well you know um you you have not um you, i'm going to use just my language and you could tell me how this sounds or it seems to me that part of the um, evolution, you might say, is for both of us, whatever gender we are, to get in touch with the other aspect of our um, identity. So if I'm mm-hmm. a male, I need to get in touch with my female side. It would be helpful for me to to do that. And mm-hmm. I think also is the same as the same for women. Would you agree? I I would agree, and I'll, I'm I'm going to share a story, a personal story, to illustrate exactly what you're saying. So, 2019, I went through a very very painful breakup uh, with someone I was with for about four and a half years, and I was really 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 struggling with the concept of um, what was it inside of me that consistently is choosing to partner with a man who would behave in certain ways that were not good. And so I was choosing to take personal responsibility for what I allow into my life. Mm. There's something in me that was attracted instead of to a man that behaves really well (laughs) to a man that was behaving really badly. And so I decided to, instead of uh, remaining what I have done in most of my life in a victim position, oh, he's just a bad guy, he's being treated poorly, and he's doing this and that, the normal spiel. I decided I no longer wanted to be a victim. 
And I decided that I was going to actively love myself at a higher level. And that meant I wanted to attract into my life a man that more closely embodied divine masculine attributes. And as I had this thought, I thought to myself, well, that means I need to understand divine masculine attributes. And it also means that I should probably hold that energy within myself. Mm. So I decided to, if I'm going to easily attract it, it's like birds of a feather flock together. Right. I have to be virtuous <laughs> to attract a virtuous person. And so not only do I, I need to take the responsibility of embodying div- divine feminine virtues, but I realized I needed to also embody divine masculine virtues in order to attract those kinds of people into my life. And so I decided to look in on myself as I do as a spiritual healer and teacher and take a look at my masculine side of my psyche. And so I went into meditation I went into deep meditation and my um, intuitive inner sight, my mind's eye, reads energy through symbols. That's how my mind works. That's how I read energy. And I've done this before. I will see certain aspects of my psyche as um, individuals in my mind's eye, as like a fully formed human even though I know full well it's an aspect of my own psyche. And so I went into meditation to look at my masculine side of my psyche. And what I found, (laughs) shockingly, uh, was a small boy about between the ages of five to seven, curled up in a ball in a dark closet, visibly beaten as if as if he had been beaten physically and shivering and shaking from trauma and as soon as i saw that symbolic representation in my mind of my male psyche i immediately recognized that that poor boy that male side of myself was in that state because of my own internal constant criticism and emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. I immediately recognized that all of the years of complaining about men, feeling horrible about how I was being treated, talking badly about men in my own mind with other women ceaselessly, hanging out in a victim position had caused this weakness and this harm and this trauma to the masculine aspect of my own psyche. Mm -hmm. And it was just the most vivid and real representation of what we do to others we're doing to ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we were to look at the female part of the male psyche of a a man that is abusive, you would see the equivalent, Mm. a wounded, traumatized, beaten down feminine aspect. Mm. And men are literally taught to beat down the feminine aspect. Of themselves and others. Yes, and I, I hope it's okay to say this, but how often have men heard the phrase, don't be a pussy? Often often over from men and women Mm -hmm. don't you cry don't be a sissy right don't be feminine Mm -hmm. hold that down hold it inside don't let it out so um last question and um I mean, people can be listening to this like 10 years in the future if we don't know, but let's say that some people are listening prior to um, whatever day this is, uh, almost March 1st, 
Um, and we, we have this event, I believe it's on the third Saturday of every, of this coming March. I don't remember the date right now. Um, we're going to be addressing this topic. What, what might people expect um, in our conversation about this or our, our exploration of this topic? Well, I tend to challenge people to confront truths that are a little uncomfortable. So exploring the concept of the violence inherent in being a victim instead of stepping into your power is one uh, topic I'd like to explore mm. in the um, um, spiritual inclusion network uh, discussions. Mm. Um, it's it's a, a sensitive topic and it's a little confronting. It's, well, it's not just a little confronting, it's a lot confronting. Mm. But addressing it and addressing those things that people normally don't say out loud or normally don't talk about is where we find our power. And it's the fulcrum point of transformation. It's necessary. That sounds really exciting. I'm, um, I'm looking forward to um, being confronted and uh, having a good time with it. <laughs> 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 I mean, the whole point is transformation. I mean, uh, my mission is to make this world a better place, and we do that by making ourselves better. And we can't make ourselves better if we're unwilling to look at our shadow. All right, so that is um, March 21st at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time. And... Um, uh, before I say um, formally goodbye to Wendy Williams, I'm going to tell you all, listener, a little bit about the Sacred Inclusion Network. Um, we have a lot of events. We, our main thing at the moment is these, these events, this third Saturday of every month. You want to know more about us, visit our website. You can get on our mailing list. We have a private Facebook group that if you ask to get in, I'll probably let you in unless you're... Um, um, I don't know if you, I'm, I'll even let the to toxic masculine people in, in, in it. <laughs> um, anyway, it's, it's on Facebook. Um, if you really like the network, you like these podcasts, you can support us by going to Patreon, looking for, um, actually at the moment, you have to look for our previous name until I change it, which is Diversity and Spirituality Network. Um, for as little as a dollar a day, you can, um, you can support us and get some behind the scenes context, con content. Um, Wendy, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm looking forward to to to, um, to March 21st, and um, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, giving me a platform to share my ideas. Yeah, a lot of stuff there. <laughs>